Welcome back everybody to Downy Boy 73 the small engine doctor's channel. Today I'm going to show you how to diagnose and repair a still MS-17D chainsaw. Now here's the saw here, I've got the cover off. The guy said it ran last fall. Now when you take the fuel cap off it reeks of old gas so I've drained that. Now what I'm going to do at this point because it still won't run with fresh gas is I'm going to open up the fuel cap and check the fuel line and filter in there. Now you can pull the cap right off and the clip's going to come out as well. Now grab a wire, bend it like this, reach down inside the fuel tank and scoop out the fuel line and filter. Take a look at it. The filter is not too too bad but look at the fuel line how it stretches like that. The rubber is deteriorated. That could be from the ethanol in the fuel possibly and because the fuel line is pinched like this it's not going to run because no fuel is going to get to the carburetor. So at this point, just snip off the fuel filter like that. Now after your cover is off, you're going to see the carburetor. Now what you want is a 516 socket or an 8mm socket and remove the two nuts that hold the carburetor on right there. And the second nut's right here under the dirt. So get these two nuts off, then the cover is going to come off. Now the reason why I'm taking the carburetor off is because I'm going to be putting in a new carb kit because I want the chainsaw to be problem free for a long time in the future. Because of the damage that the old fuel caused to the fuel line in the fuel tank, I can just imagine what damage could have been caused to the diaphragms in the carburetor, so I don't want to take a chance, I'm just going to replace them because they're inexpensive to buy. Now I'll just remove the carburetor cover. Now at this point here you need a flat screwdriver, you need to pop up the choke lever. It's made of plastic so be very careful, it's just going to pop out of its clip here, just like that. Now just move it out of the way and now you can disconnect the choke linkage just like that and now just leave the whole lever down here it's going to be out of the way. Now what we need to remove is the throttle linkage that goes to the carburetor. What you need to do is grab the butterfly lever here then push back the throttle linkage it's going to come out. Set it aside like that. Now on the other side of the saw you can remove the choke linkage right here out of the way. Now I'll pull the carburetor back like this all the way out past the studs here and now I'll just push down on the fuel line to get it off the carb. And now we've got our carburetor removed. So now what I've done is I've put back the fuel cap on and I've plugged the air intake hole here and I've plugged the old fuel line hole with a screw the reason why I did that is because I'm going to go and air blow all the dirt out of here before I reinstall the carburetor on. This is the kind of tip I use to blow my parts off and always wear safety glasses when you do this. Sometimes what I'll use is a paintbrush and some gas and just brush off the dirt. So now let's take the carburetor part and look at the carb kit inside. So as you can see it's a Zama carburetor. It's going to say right on the carb like that. And under here. And it's a C1Q carburetor. You can see the letters down in here. And on this side of the carburetor you can see the model number of the carb. So these are the numbers you want to use when you get a new carb kit. We'll start by removing the screw at the top here. Once the screw's off, the cover's going to come right off, and it really smells of old gas. And now take off the two screws that hold the back cover here, and just pull the cover off. You can see a bit of green stuff in here, that's because the gas is really old. Look at the green stuff down here as well. So it's a good thing this carburetor is being taken apart. Now let's start with this cover here. This is the pump diaphragm. It may still be good for a while, but like I said, I'm going to put in a new carb kit anyways. Then you could remove the gasket here. Now remove the metering diaphragm from this cover here. And this one here could have been good for a little while longer, but I'm not going to take a chance. It's going to be replaced. It's going to come in the kit. And I'm going to loosen the screw here to remove the needle. 
So you don't need to remove this screw totally, just loosen it enough so the pin holding the needle lever can slide out. Make sure not to lose that little spring here. Now that all these parts are removed on this side, I'm going to remove the small screen inside here with a small pick. Just reach in and pull up. Sometimes these little screens look clean, but they're actually varnishized with fuel. So what happens is the fuel cannot flow through it anymore because all the little pores are clogged. Now also what we can remove is the little jet here. Make sure you have a really good screwdriver for that. So these are all the parts I'm left with. I'm going to put these aside. And you should also have all these parts that came out and the small jet. Make sure you do not lose that little jet. Now I've got my carburetor in a little container like this. What I'm going to do is spray it with carb cleaner, let it sit for a couple hours, then come back and clean it. Also, if you have carburetor cleaner in a jug and you want to soak the carburetor in a small can with carburetor cleaner, that's good too. It's a good thing to wear safety glasses when doing this because sometimes you can spray in a hole, it'll come out another hole and spray right in the eyes. So now I took my carb out from the carb cleaner, cleaned it all up, wiped it, and now it's good to go. Also if you use your air compressor to blow out the little holes, use a low pressure like 30 pounds or something like that. Don't go too heavy while doing this. Here's the small jet I took off earlier. I stuck it in a piece of Tigon fuel line just to show you what it looks like. Now you want to make sure that the small hole inside is clean. You'll know if it's clean by blowing in the back of the tube here. If you hear the air coming out, you know it's clean. You can also run a small wire through there if it fits to clean it. But don't force the wire if it won't go in because you don't want to expand the hole bigger than it is. After you know it's clean, just simply reinstall it in its position. Do not over tighten this when you put it back on because you could easily strip the threads. Now before I reinstall the carburetor, I'm going to replace the fuel line because it's much easier to do it right now. Just start by flipping the saw over like this. You're going to need a T27 Torx screwdriver to remove all the screws that hold the recoil assembly. There's four all together. And remove the fuel cap before you do this. And there's one screw down here. You're also going to have to take off the oil cap. Now lift the chain brake handle off of the recoil and now pull up. Now you just want to grab the fuel tank like this and pull up. And here's the old line that's stuck in there. The old line usually goes in here and is secured by this grommet on the fuel line but because it's kind of rotted it just came out. Also I've checked the chainsaw first to make sure it had spark because if you don't have spark then you have to address the ignition module but we can continue because I do know there's good spark, so it's got to be a fuel problem.